Well, hello my friends. Welcome back to my channel. This is Alfredo the Rebel Turner. Hey, I'm back with the oak that I picked up from a wood pile, uh, a wood burning burning pile. Somebody who cuts up wood and splits it all up with the axe. And out of those finds, I found some interesting pieces. Uh, extremely high bark on a couple of slabs that I had which were cut from the very outside part of the wood and some torn up pieces that had all kind of wavy stuff that I was really really hoping to capture something a little more than I have but with that I also wanted to capture something completely different which I have not been able to do I've done a couple of aces out of it and um, to take a log that is naturally split whichever direction put it on the lathe and not do anything with that outside has <laughs> has not worked in my favor but I had another pretty hunky lock from somewhere in the middle of the uh, the piece and I decided to do something really different Okay, so on the bandsaw, I cut it up into going towards the a skinny point. I cut it in uh, in angles, coming out towards the back, and I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with this stock, seeing that it still has this. I do have a couple of ideas in mind that I wanted to play with, and I know that the first thing I need to do is make a tendon on this to mount it on. The idea was to leave this square, but if I do that, I cannot put my steady rest out with these points like this. So this is where it's going to develop and see which way I go. I am anxious to get this going and see if I can maintain some of the swirly stuff that's going through here. Definitely, this I want to uh, be playing part of this uh, vase. Over here, this side is not uh, too intriguing. This side has some pretty good interesting, and this one, of course, has a lot of nice interest, almost like a bird. So, let's get started. Like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is make a tenon and see what I'm going to develop over here. I think I'm going to bring this in on, at the top. I wanted to leave it square, but uh, again, you know, I don't think that's going to work for me. I'm going to put the speed at about 600 RPM, see how that does. It's pretty well balanced, actually. I took a little bit of time to balance it off. 680 RPM. And I'm going there with a parting tool. To, uh, get that base established. Right now, that really is all that I want to do to this uh, base because I'll end up parting this out a little bit later on.
That's nice and tight. So it's time for me to see and make a decision as to what do I want to do with this piece. What I want to do is I want to leave this body square and I want to bring it up from about here, the lowest point, and make a neck of some sort. As much as I would want the top, the whole piece to be square, I don't like this and I don't want to take it down any further. Um, so although I could literally cut this down and leave the whole thing square, but then again, the problem is I would not be able to put the steady rest. I need a round section on this so I can rest the steady rest in and uh, rely to be able to hollow this out. On the hollow out, I'm gonna go, these things, these spacings are not identical. If they were identical, I'd probably shoot it up on the hollowing to end up with a, an opening on each one of these squares that would look pretty cool. And I will see with that. If I get the hole, I could always put this back on the disc sander and true up the sides to equal up all the uh, spots equally and I might do that. So let's get started and bring this uh, top part so I can uh, Time to start thinking of shape, size, and everything else that's going on with this piece. Shape, as far as these shoulders are concerned, is that what I want to do? And definitely, but I think I can come down a little bit more and get some of this bulk out of it. That's what I want. And I think I want to leave this really nice stuff on the neck as well. It's time to throw up the very outside face of it. And create a little round over. I'm gonna leave the speed the way you see it here. I think it adds a little bit of character to this design. This will look more like a cookie jar than it will anything else. So actually, that's what I'm going to call this and I'll make a lid for this and I'm going to forget coming through the outside parts of this. I'm just going to hollow this out as much as I can without coming through and make a lid for it. I think that will look really good. So it's time to move the tail stock out of the way, get my uh, steady rest in here.
right about there I think is great. Move my wheels out of the way so I can uh, go way inside there. Can't do it with my uh, banjo in the way. going in I'm actually going rubbing in on the top edge so that way I can feel the piece the bowl and then once I get to the bottom then I do a little bit
I am good up here and coming around the neck area the bottom is still a little bit bulky um, I'm having a hell of a time reaching my tool in there um, so I'm gonna continue and uh, see what I can do I'm gonna scrape this neck a little bit more but I'll wait for that on the end Well, you know, I did say I was going to be back probably tomorrow, but I'm in a house just sitting down and I'm thinking about this and I can't stand the idea of leaving it so close to being finished. It's like posting, you know, you can do it in two turnings, but, uh, or two videos, but as soon as I get it done, I, uh, I want to show what's been done so I'm actually going to wrap this up I'm going to sand this rim and uh, going to take it into a different tool and true up these edges because I don't want it to be sanding over here into a fine sanding stick around and see what I do with this So, I'm going to sand it. Now, what I'm thinking of doing is actually passing it up, passing it on my uh, six inch edger a few times and clean up the sides. So the thing that I have to take into account is that I have to run it this way on a down grain. The uh, planer or the edger is set up to, to only take out about a sixteenth of an inch.
Well, the finish is going to be spray on lacquer on this whole piece. And the grain on this is beautiful. It's a, it does have a little bit of burl to it. That side is pretty plain, but then I get that's get exciting and really nice in this area and this area right here so I am happy as I can be with the end results on the shape and the overall of the piece told my wife uh, I was gonna call this a uh, cookie jar uh, she made me aware that for a cookie jar you need to be able to fit your whole hand in there and maybe fit some cookies. Well, I really don't know what to call this one other than a vase. If it was going to be a cookie jar, I was going to make a lid for it. And if it's not a cookie jar and I make a lid for it, then what is it? So I'm a little confused as to what to call this other than just a square vase. I gotta do one more thing to it. I gotta reverse chuck it and get rid of that, uh, make a concave on that. Uh, could do it with a sander. Thinking maybe I should do it with a sander, but it was nothing.
Well, for all it's worth, it's a square vase. Um, love the marks uh, going through here. This side doesn't look like oak at all. That's how spirally it is. Then you get over here and voila, it's oak. Without a doubt, it's still very curly oak. But these two sides are very curly oak and these two sides look like a completely different wood. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful markings. You can still see some of the characteristics, but uh, uh, it's, it's very different uh, for sure. Well, I hope you like it and I sure hope that this and works like this will get you to subscribe anyway. And don't forget, you can't just subscribe without giving me a thumbs up. Thank you very much. We'll see you very soon with the next tutorial.